1149 BC, the Egyptians engaged the mysterious people of the sea in a battle off the African coast of the eastern Mediterranean. The Egyptians emerged victorious, and the battle is commemorated on the wall of a temple in Luxor, Egypt. The stone reliefs at Luxor depict the people of the sea wearing a strange headdress of short, upright feathers, not unlike the feathered war bonnet of the Atlantes warriors at Tula, Mexico. The feathered headdress is a unique, iconic symbol identifying Native American heritage. With the exception of the obscure ancient Egyptian god Bess, the multi-feathered headdress had no precedent in the ancient world prior to the arrival of the mysterious sea peoples, who later became known as the Phoenicians. Ironically, the Egyptian god Bess, depicted as a dwarf wearing a Native American-style feathered headdress, was quite popular amongst the Phoenicians. The Phoenician version of Bess often appeared as a masthead figure on Phoenician ships. The Phoenicians were known in the ancient Mediterranean for having a fascination with dwarves. Like the Phoenicians, the people of Mesoamerica had a fascination with dwarves also. Dwarves frequently appear in Mesoamerican stories, myths, and legends. Montezuma kept dwarves like circus exhibits on his palace grounds. Both the Phoenicians and the Aztecs shared symbolic imagery centered around the snake and the eagle. Images of snakes and eagles together, oftentimes with the snake in the talons and beak of the eagle, are frequently found in ancient Phoenicia and Aztec Mexico. The image of an eagle clutching a snake was the national icon of Aztec Mexico, and it survived into modern times as an image on the Mexican flag. One of the most famous ancient tales of a Phoenician is from the Bible. The Hebrew said Goliath was a giant and he had six fingers and six toes. When the Maya king Pakal's burial tomb in Palenque was excavated and the king's sarcophagus lid lifted, it was discovered the Maya monarch was a giant and he had six fingers and six toes, just like Goliath. Also, Somewhere in Palenque, it's believed there are early Phoenician writings. Carthage was a powerful Mediterranean city on the West African coast. According to accepted history, it was founded by Phoenicians who later broke away from the main yoke of the mother country to form the independent nation of Carthage. They're Phoenicians, but are always designated by mainstream history as separate or different from the Phoenicians of the Eastern Mediterranean. Carthage, the other Phoenicia, controlled the territories Plato attributed to Atlantis. According to one historian, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, the Carthaginians and their predecessors, the Phoenicians, apparently had visited a great island called Antilla, which often appears on medieval maps and may represent the Azores or Atlantis itself. The Phoenician conquest and subsequent colonization of the Western Mediterranean required a large number of people. This suggests a large influx of Phoenician settlers helped establish the many Phoenician towns and cities that sprang up in the Western Mediterranean after the conquest. If Mesoamerica is Atlantis and the Phoenicians are Plato's invading Atlanteans, then it would stand to reason the Phoenicians settled their newly acquired Western Mediterranean lands with people from Mesoamerica. Ironically, archaeology proves there was a mass exodus of Mayan people. In some cases, entire cities were suddenly abandoned. To date, no satisfactory explanation has been given for the sudden disappearance of Maya people or where they went after they abandoned their cities. According to the accepted historical timeline, the Mayan exodus occurred between 800 and 1000 AD. The influx of Phoenicians in the Mediterranean and the disappearance of large numbers of Mayans in Mesoamerica suggests the two events aren't separated by 2000 years, but are in fact linked together by the same historical event.
It also suggests the modern understanding of the Maya calendar is off by six to eight Bakhtuns. Those familiar with the subject say the people of Mesoamerica were incapable of launching a full-scale sea invasion of the Mediterranean. The prevailing argument is Mesoamericans only had canoes. They lacked large ocean-going vessels and the knowledge of sailing them. There is some indication from Spanish and Native American sources that pre-conquest Mesoamerica was familiar with sailing and some of the larger canoes were sailed across the water in the traditional sense of the word sailed, rigging, masts, sails, etc. An Aztec legend stated that when the deity Quetzalcoatl left Mexico, he did so by sailing across the sea. In 1515, a Spanish slave raiding expedition from Cuba arrived at the Bay Islands off the coast of Honduras and captured 500 Native Americans. The Native Americans were put below deck and taken back to Cuba. When the ship docked in Cuba, the Spaniards let their guard down and the captured Native Americans broke the hatch. They seized the ship and sailed it back home 250 leagues away in a headwind. To accomplish a feat the captain Native Americans accomplished requires the utmost skill and knowledge of sailing large ocean-going vessels. The ancient Maya coastal town of Cerros in Belize had docking facilities that could accommodate ocean-going vessels up to 40 feet long. To put that into perspective, Christopher Columbus's smallest ocean-crossing ship, the Nina, was only 50 feet long. By all indications, Mesoamericans were capable of crossing the Atlantic in sailing ships and capable of fulfilling Plato's criteria for the invasion of the Mediterranean by Atlantis. There's one final note on the Phoenicia-Atlantis-Mesoamerica connection, and that connection involves corn. Corn is native to Mexico, yet there are indications that corn existed in the Mediterranean before Columbus's arrival to America in 1492. On his last voyage to America in 1502, Columbus brought his brother Bartholomew along for the ride. At Guanaja, an island off the shore of modern Honduras, Bartholomew Columbus made a startling statement in a diary entry about the existence of corn in Europe prior to his brother's arrival to America in 1492. Bartholomew Columbus said, the corn grown at Guanaja was exactly like the corn grown on the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean. He said the corn grew in ears and it made a superior bread. The Balearic Islands are an island group in the western Mediterranean off the shore of modern Spain. In ancient times, the Balearic Islands were controlled by the Phoenicians. A modern historian had this to say about Phoenician corn in the ancient Mediterranean. The climate of ancient Phoenicia was more or less the same as it is today. In the winter, there is a high rainfall which penetrates deep into the loamy soil and fertilizes it. The spring begins in March and by May the corn is ripe. A closer look at the Phoenicians shows these mysterious people of the Mediterranean basin have shared cultural connections with Mesoamerica. It suggests the invasion of the Mediterranean by Atlantis was an actual historical event that began in 1149 BC with a naval battle between Phoenicians and ancient Egypt. By 900 BC, the Phoenicians of Carthage controlled the near exact Mediterranean territory Atlantis was said to have controlled. That Plato alludes to the Phoenicians and the Phoenicians allude to the Mesoamericans is an odd paradox suggesting Tenochtitlan and Mesoamerica are Atlantis. The Basque people of northern Spain are unlike any European people. They have little common genetic and no linguistic connection to Europe. Little is known about the Basques before the Roman occupation of the Iberian Peninsula beginning in 220 BC. There were Basque soldiers with Cortes when the Spanish conquistadors arrived in Mexico. 
Bernal Diaz del Castillo clearly stated, the Basque soldiers were able to speak directly with the Otomi people of Mexico. The Otomi lived in Tenochtitlan and the northern part of the Aztec Empire, along the Gulf of Mexico. A prominent city of the Otomi was named Atlan. A Basque missionary arrived to post-conquest Guatemala in the mid-16th century. While there, he preached to a congregation of Maya people. It's recorded that the Basque priest preached to the Maya in his native Basque language and was understood by the Maya people. When Cortes first arrived to Mexico, he landed at the Mayan island of Cozumel. While there, Cortes asked a Basque crewman to interpret something the Maya had said. The Basques of Spain spoke the same language as several Native American nations of Mexico and Guatemala. The conclusion is undeniable. The Basques of Spain are originally from Mesoamerica. In addition to a shared common language, there are other unique cultural ties shared by the Basques and pre-Columbian Mesoamerica. One such cultural tie was first observed by Ferdinand Columbus, youngest son of the famous explorer. During his father's last voyage to America in 1502, Ferdinand wrote of going to a pueblo in Veragua in modern-day Panama. The young Columbus said the houses there reminded him of Basque houses. The Basques counted in twenties like the Maya, not in tens like the Europeans. The Basque ballgame High Alai is similar to the Maya ballgame Pakatak. The Basques elongated the head like the Maya. Genetically, the Basques are very different from the other indigenous people of Western Europe. When compared with other European peoples, the Basques stand unique in their common blood groups. They have a high frequency of Group O, a relatively low frequency of Group A, and the lowest frequency of Group B in Europe. With regard to the RH blood groups, they show the highest frequency of RH negatives found in any European population and, with the exception of some Berber tribes, the highest in the world. All this shows that the Basques are different from the French or Spanish. The differences between the Basques and their European counterparts indicates a Basque origin outside of Europe. The geopolitical, social, and religious reality of pre-conquest Mexico strangely echoes that of Atlantis. When the Atlantis conquest of the Western Mediterranean is compared to the Phoenician conquest of the Western Mediterranean, there is a near identical match. When Phoenician culture is compared to Mesoamerican culture, there are matches that create a startling paradox connecting the Phoenicians to Atlantis and Mesoamerica. Add the Basques and their ability to speak directly with Mesoamericans into the mix, and it creates another strange paradox connecting Mesoamerica to Atlantis. The common language shared by European Basques and the people of Mesoamerica is proof positive that the Basques are a colony that originally came from Mesoamerica, just as the USA and its language originally came from Great Britain. Are the Basques a surviving remnant of the Greater Atlantis invasion that may have included the Otomi province and its prominent city of Atlan? Are the Basques the smoking gun pointing to the historical reality of Plato's Atlantis? Add it all together, and many of the greatest and most puzzling mysteries of Plato's Atlantis come into sharp focus.